All right, we have got our two halfling casters here. Well, the reason I'm trying to get his pouches first is because if you go over them, and I know most of the painters out there will tell you to do a base color first, uh, but the problem with the miniature, this miniature, is that the paint is going to fill in some of that detail that we don't want to lose that. That nice leather brown. Plus painting the, there, just like I did there, painting the smallest area means that if you miss and go outside the area, you can just cover it with the cloth color that comes next. And I can't really tell if what he has across him is like a bandolier of potions maybe. A buckled coat maybe with brass. Gotta pick a color for the coat. More brass on the back. Bob Ross <laughs> commentary since I've been out of videos for so long. Life caught up to me. I have been in classes. So full time even through the summer. I'm doing graphic arts. So you guys are going to see a lot more of the computer side of art. I'm sure I'll make time to do some paint now and again. Mostly probably when I get folks excited in session. Live, live players that want their miniatures. Table ready. And there again, I'm not worrying too much about getting outside of the boundary of the boot because I am going to go back and paint that base during the basing part. I'm going to switch over to this one. Same deal. I'm going to get his boots with that brown. I should grab some more minis um, so I can use up some of this brown. Oh, this one looks like he's got the, the boots all the way up. Or maybe they're just the pants come down over. So maybe we'll come back and have that be a, be a different color for the pants because otherwise <laughs> the boots up to the knee is going to make him end up looking like a Wild West gunslinger there. Yeah, maybe I like the, the knee-high boots instead of the... What's the nice thing about these miniatures is a lot of the lines are kind of up to interpretation for style and, and what you want it to look like. There again, pretty messy on the base, but I'm not worried about it because I'm going back doing the base separate. Now the tricky part on these guys is they're gonna be the skin color that's always the tricky part on all miniatures but um and that in the eyes I don't even know if I can get eyes I might have to just wash in some eyes with this size but the uh, the skin color because we are gonna try and get them to be Simultaneously tan, but also the depicted picture. I wish I could tell you. I don't think we still have that, that wrapper, but um, the wrapping had him have more of like a grayish tone. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Dark hair, probably. So yeah, if you want to come check out the Capital City Codex, that Kickstarter will run August 1st through the end of August. And it's got stat blocks and story hooks for each of the characters. Uh, it's got favorites from sessions like uh, King Grottom and his adopted centaur daughter Tyria, as well as Mason the Sewer Sage and a whole bunch of others called bronze flesh tone which really just kind of looks like fake Hollywood Conan the Barbarian spray on tan skin tone but we'll start with that and then um, usually to make it a little bit more skinnish I'm gonna add a little bit of P 
peach or pink. The other hard part about mixing paints is that each of the different companies and makes of paint has a different consistency, different, um, you know, thickness and, and solvency and coverage and things. But we're gonna go with this and um, actually gonna take in a little bit of that leftover brown. I'm gonna pull the bronze away into the brown. Just pull pink in a little bit more, and then we'll take some of that gray. That actually looks pretty good for being tan and ashen both. I always worry that they're gonna look like a clown or a stone golem, or but this is actually turning out pretty nice for the darker skin tone. Yeah. I don't know how well you can even see that. It's so tiny. My phone camera probably doesn't pick that up real good, but um, all right. We are back with our two Helphards or Halflings and our extra paint Bardbarian. Pretty rough and tumble looking Bard. Big ol' mean Bard. All right. Get this blue on here and then let it dry and then bring that kind of orange gold bronze metal in for the clasps and stuff. That look great. I'm halfway tempted uh, to hot glue or, or thermoset plastic a uh, big tiki mask to this character. They no longer carry that piece of equipment, but. For a long time, they carried this kind of angry, hugging, spiky tiki mask. The hard part, too, is that this size, you can't really dry brush very well because there's not enough surface area between the stops. There's enough rays in the detail, but not enough, like you have to kind of make a sweeping broad stroke over it. We are gonna give these guys another, oh, I guess we can get their hair. They don't have to have gray hair, they can get their dark hair done. I think I'm gonna do the bases while I get the black out for the hair. Although I suppose I could just do them all at once once they're glued down. All right, the little dudes are ready to get their bases put on. I got my thermoset plastic. I'm gonna do the liquid version, liquid plastic today. And the nice thing is, if it doesn't work, then we just unstick them and restick them. A minute to stir, and then about two and a half minutes to let it get set up. Doesn't take much more than a few drops here. Putting the edge of one side. Now these are both overflowing, but we'll get them centered and then um, we'll actually cut down the excess once it dries. But we'll like to move them out so that it peels away the excess. All right, all that's left is we'll let that set up. And uh, I'm gonna let you guys watch. And we'll put on the uh, time lapse there. How did my stick end up perfectly on edge? That's pretty cool. All right, we're all set up. Look at these. Bases look, turned out awesome. Just gonna pop them back. Now the uh, pop tops won't hold them as strong, obviously, as they did before. See, I love it was glued down and this part just kind of falls off. All right, so so 
it won't hold them as uh, strong as it did before, but I only need to get my uh, little bit of black paint on them, so I don't need them really to be super stable or anything like that. Yeah, I love this liquid plastic. Get it at your local Hobby Lobby. It's actually uh, like for uh, airplane modeling and stuff. I like also this method of basing because um, the little base that comes with the miniatures. We've already painted that in the painting process, so there really isn't much risk of like hitting the boots or getting accidental black anywhere. And then it just is one neat uniform black base ready to go. Smooth on the bottom because we always, uh, in this kind of basing, we always turn the uh, lettering that's on the bottom of the base upwards. Um, we're not trying to necessarily hide the uh, production information, but it does give the plastic an extra thing to hold on to, extra curves in the sur surface and the little crevices in the words for the plastic to get down. But also, just, it's nice to have the smooth bottom of the base for moving around on the map. All right, I'm gonna let these dry up and then we are going to send them over to the spinner and give you a look at our completed halflings. Ah, they look so good. I love the gold on the blue. Can't tell it from this angle, but these guys are little. They turned out awesome. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks, Internet.